the problem here we have is a bungee jumping problem. And you can see the, the picture there. Um, so we have a person with a mass of 100 kilograms. They want to go bungee jumping um, from the New River Gorge Bridge in West Virginia. Um, this is a place I've been. I did not go bungee jumping. I was there to, to go uh, whitewater rafting. Um, but this also, if you um, ever find the West Virginia State Quarter, uh, this is the bridge and the gorge that's on there. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty tall bridge, um, quite beautiful scenery. Um, so the bridge, I looked this up, it's 276 meters above the water, above the river. Um, and a, kind of a common length for a bungee cord um, is 40 meters. So the question that we have here is what would be the minimum spring constant for the for the bungee cord that would be needed for the person to do the jump safely. Right, so whenever we have an energy problem, we have to uh, pick two well-defined points uh, in space where we're gonna look at the energy at, at one and compare it to the energy in the other. So what would those two points be um, if you're trying to find, you know, you're just barely making it safe? So try and uh, I'll give you a second to think there. Um, what would be the starting point and what would be the ending point if you're just going to barely you know, be safe enough to do this bungee jump? What we're going to want to look at are our point one is where the person is first jumping. Right from there. And then point two, well, if I'm just going to barely uh, have a successful bungee jump, that means that uh, the person is going to make it all the way down basically just till they reach the level of the water before they turn around. So point two is going to be down at the at the water. Right. Um, so we want to write our energy at each of those points. So what I generally do um, is say, okay, so I, I label this E1 for the energy at point one, uh, what types of energy could could possibly be involved in this problem, right? So I start as, as broadly as possible. So um, I might have some potential energy uh, due to gravity. So PE sub G. I might have some potential energy from the bungee cord, which is going to be a spring potential energy. And I might have some kinetic energy. All right, so that's uh, at the top. And then I want to look at all of these and see, well, OK, are any of these uh, zero so I can get rid of them right away? Okay, so with potential energy due to gravity, we always have to um, we always have to um, define where our height is going to be zero, right? So that's up to you. But um, you know, here we have a nice, convenient definition to call the height equal to zero uh, when the person would be just about to touch the water, right? So then we have the height of 276 meters up at the top, right? So we know that there is going to be some potential energy due to gravity, but the spring is not, or the, the bungee cord is not stretched at first, right? It's, it's not gonna stretch until you've, uh, the person has jumped and gone down at least 40 meters because that's the length of the bungee cord. So um, I can cross out the spring potential energy, right? So and say that's zero. And then uh, for the kinetic energy, um, well, you're basically gonna just step off. Right, so you basically have a velocity of zero uh, when you first start. And so, oops, let me, so that is also gonna be zero, right? So when we start, we just have the uh, potential energy uh, due to gravity. So I can copy that down and um, if we remember the formula for the potential energy due to gravity. It's the mass of the person times the acceleration due to gravity g, and then times the height h. Right, so we start with just uh, potential energy due to gravity. All right, um, so I'll give you a minute uh, to work on your own. Um, 
try writing out uh, what types of energy would be present when the person is at point two. All right, so you can include all of them, uh, all of the three types, but then decide which of those would be equal to zero. Well, when you're at point two, you're at the point where the height is equal to zero, so the potential energy due to gravity would be mg times zero, so that term is going to be zero. The potential energy um, due to the spring from the bungee cord, oops, undo, the spring is stretched there, so uh, we are going to have that. And then we've got the kinetic energy. So if you're turning around, right, if you still have some kinetic energy uh, when you reach the river, you're bungee jumping wrong, right? That's uh, going to be bad news. So um, we want that to be zero. So that means that energy two, E2, is just equal to um, the pot potential energy from the spring, which is going to be one half K, oops, uh, K x squared. So those are our, those are our expressions. Um, now, when we go to actually figure this out, we okay, we've got two different distances involved, right? We've got the height, but then we've also got x, which is how much the spring is stretched uh, at point two. So we're we'll have to uh, make sure and and probably make in our drawing uh, an indication of of where x fits in. Uh, but before we do that. Um, the other thing that we have to do whenever we do an energy problem is we say, okay, uh, is the energy um, at point one and point two the same or is it not, right? So that the way that we figure that out is that we say that the external work on the system, that's equal to the change in total energy. Right, so that would be the change in energy is E2 minus E1. So if we're defining, you know, if we've defined a potential energy due to gravity, that means that we're including not just the bungee jumper in the problem, we're including the earth, right? So our system includes the bungee jumper and the earth. And if we have a potential energy from the spring, that means our spring or our bungee cord in this case is part of the system. Our, our system is, is the person, the spring, and the earth. So now we need to say, well, are there any forces that we're considering that would be from, would be external to that system? Now, uh, in reality, you know, if you're jumping off of a bridge this tall and falling for 40 meters before your bungee cord even starts stretching, um, yeah, you're going to be, um, there's going to be some air resistance, but we're going to ignore that uh, for this class. So um, if we ignore air resistance, there's no other um, external forces on this, on this system. Everything is internal to the system. So our um, external work then is zero. So that means our change in energy is zero, or another way of saying that is that E2 is equal to E1. So we've got MGH is equal to one half KX squared. Now we need to figure out how X fits into this, uh, this picture. So let me zoom in on that picture a little bit. Um, so we know that the person's gonna fall for 40 meters. Um, the length of the bungee cord. So I'll write that as, um, um, before the spring starts stretching. And so then this distance uh, from where the spring starts stretching to, to the water, that distance is going to be equal to x, or that's what we're, we're calling x. So L is uh, this distance from here to here. And then x is this distance the rest of the way to the water. So that, what that tells me is that x plus l is going to be equal to the height of the bridge, right? So just by uh, you know doing the, the quick math, the total height of the bridge is 276. The length of the um, bungee cord is 40 meters. So that means that the stretch of the bungee cord is going to be 236 meters. 
x is equal to the height of the bridge minus the, uh, the length of the bungee cord. So now in this equation, I have, um, well, what am I trying to figure out? I, it, if we go back to the um, problem statement, it says, what is the minimum spring constant that's needed for the person to do, to do the jump safely? Right, minimum spring constant. So we're trying to find the value of k that would let the person go all the way to the water, which is how we've set up our problem. So we're trying to solve this equation uh, algebraically for, um, for k. Right, so I want to... Um, get this k by itself. So that means first I'll divide both sides by, right, so that'll make, we, we need to get rid of the one half, so we'll multiply both sides by two. So plugging in values, I So um, that value of K then is 9.7 uh, Newtons per meter. Okay, so why are E2 and E1 uh, equal is the, is the question. Will they always be? Um, no, they, they won't always be. So they're equal in this problem because the, the external work is zero, right? So um, I think this, this sort of uh, procedure of writing down, you know, define your system, then you write down your energy at point of the system at point one, the energy of the system at point two, and then say, okay, the external work is equal to the difference between those or the change in energy. Um, then say, okay, was there anything that was left out? Right? So were there any external forces that aren't that I can't include in my system? Uh, if there is, then then the energy is not going to be the same. Right, but in this case, we've taken care of everything. Right, there's no we're we're ignoring any effects of air resistance because that's too complicated for this class. So we're just assuming that it that it um, is negligible. So in this case, E2 and E1 are going to have the same value.